also have uh, a colleague uh, back in Istanbul, our financial columnist and analyst, Taha Arvas. Hi, Taha. Uh, Caitlin there was talking a little bit about the financial side of this, the, the, the sheer scale of the investment. Uh, infrastructure, it's been a big theme, hasn't it, of, yes. of President Erdogan's years. Um, but it does come as a time, doesn't it, when the Turkish economy is going through uh, a bit of a rough patch. Has there ever been any questioning of the scale of this kind of investment? Sure. Um, or are we quite convinced it's going to be pushed through and finished? Uh, I, I'm, I, I don't think we have a concern or um, a concern about it being not completed. I, I don't think there will be a problem in not completing it. I think there have been opposition parties have said that there's no need, perhaps, uh, for such an airport. But anyone um, you know, who's flown into the current airport uh, can plainly see the need for it. So uh, those are, I mean, you know, there will always be questions as far as do we need investment in infrastructure. The same debate is going on in the United States and elsewhere. So uh, in that respect, uh, people will question the need for it. But um, I, I haven't heard anyone say that you know, there, there is a chance that the construction won't be finished uh, here at this airport. And and then there is always the argument with, with investment in infrastructure that it, it actually, you know, it's an investment in the country's future. There are, you know, it's a gamble, but it's, it's a gamble worth paying because you invest in infrastructure and it, it boosts the country's ability to generate wealth, et cetera, et cetera. What's, right. what's the view out there on, on, on the returns in terms of GDP that this airport could generate once it's running at full capacity, I wonder? Right. I mean, uh, the, the, the one thing that we need to point out here is that the investments made for the airport have all been through the private sector. So no taxpayer money has, been, has gone towards this airport. Um, in fact, the, the companies that, are, that have uh, won a tender to actually operate the airport have paid on top of that to the taxpayer. So there is no government outlay initially. Um, and there is, I mean, obviously, uh, there's, there's a discussion about what uh, what the returns to the GDP will be for such an airport, but I mean, honestly, we're in such a moment of flux, both in Turkey and in the world, that it's difficult to say um, what those returns will be. I mean, the one positive thing is this is an international hub. We're talking about connecting North America, Europe with Asia, because, uh, you know, as I said recently, I mean, we're talking about a nine-hour flight from, from Istanbul to New York and to Shanghai. We're, we're right in the center of it all. Um, so in that respect, I, I think it will be yes. a very a positive uh, investment. And we've seen in recent years, haven't we, the, you know, the, the, the extraordinary expansion of Turkish Airlines, which is now a huge global brand. I guess right. it makes sense. You've got a big player in the aviation market. You almost need um, a, a big airport hub to, to match those ambitions. Right. I, I mean, uh, recently I, I flew from Istanbul to uh, the west coast of the United States. It was a 14-hour flight. You know, um, even if you're you know, on Turkish Airlines business class, it's very luxurious, it's great, etc. But still, the longer flights really take a lot out of you. So the business traveler will look to minimize the uh, travel time that they're into. And uh, in that respect, they, they definitely want to um, uh, choose the, the, the uh, you know, the location with the least travel times. And I think Istanbul will do that for a lot of people. Uh, so I think in that respect, the airport will be used uh, very much. And uh, like you said, the current Istanbul airport is, is bursting at its seams with, with uh, travelers. So um, this is a much needed, uh, you know, even a late arrival really for Istanbul. And I think it'll be uh, positive. And, oh, yeah. Sorry, what please go ahead. To, yeah. I, I, am I right in saying there are, there are two other airports already? Obviously, there's the main Ataturk one. There's another one. What happens to those two once this new one is up and running? Uh, the other one, the one on the Asian side, uh, will continue operating as is. There's no uh, change in plans with that one. The current Ataturk Airport will be, uh, there are several um, uh, sections of that airport. All the commercial sides will be closed down. So all that traffic will be moved over to this new airport. The private airport there, um, I think only one runway, one, one runway will remain open. Um, and that other, the rest of the airport will be transformed into essentially a central park of Istanbul. It's supposed to be the largest uh, metropolitan park in the world, they say, but we'll see. Um, but there, there are plans uh, to recently, to very uh, quickly here, shut down the rest of that airport. Okay, and as I understand it, I've only been to Istanbul a handful of, of times, and I was always struck by, you know, how central 
to the city the present Ataturk airport is. That's quite good, although the traffic is pretty infernal at times. This, right. I gather, this new project is much further, what, northwest of the present uh, location? Is that right? It is. It is. I mean, you have to. Th I mean, you have to kind of think about it um, through. I mean, London, for example, and Heathrow is not that far away. But all the other airports, the city's also close. But I mean, we're t Lutton and uh, Stansted, etc. They're pretty far. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's an hour by car from some of those airports. Um, I mean, so many of the smaller European cities, and what we need to do really is compare apples to apples here. We're talking about a city that has a population of practically 20 million people in the metropolitan area. That's a very, very large city. Um, and so New York City, I think, has eight airports within a 100-mile radius. Istanbul only has, uh, I think, two. Uh, there's a very smaller airport nearby. So it, it was very important that this airport come online. Uh, the, it was built uh, 20 years ago, the previous airport was, I think, now. So 21 years ago. Uh, pr uh, so I think it was, um, uh, the capacity at the time was really underestimated, um, the, 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 the utilization of the capacity. So um, relative to other European airports, uh, yes, it's a little further than the central, to the central of the city, but who knows, maybe we'll have a hyperloop in Istanbul and it'll be a two minute ride to uh, the center of the city. Um, we were just <laughs> talking with Andrew about, it's yeah, a six it minute ride, yeah, it's a six, six minute <coughs> ride from Shanghai airport to uh, the city center with a bullet train, you know? So uh, okay. with, with advancements in technology, yeah. who knows, maybe we'll, we'll get there.